quota more than is met or meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be a fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Verse 28, he that trusts in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word when we bow our heads in prayer. And Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you, God, for this time of being able to come here and to worship you and to celebrate you, to adore you, to celebrate you, O oh God. Father, we ask right now that this time be a time to reflect on what you have done for us. As one of the ministers already said, this is the month where we go in thanking you for things you have done. Thanksgiving season, O oh God. Father, we ask right now that you help us to reflect on what you have given us and to be able to bless you in return. As always, O oh God, I ask that you speak to me and through me, that your people not hear me, but you who live within me. I glorify you right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You may sit. So we are starting a new sermon series, which is entitled The Giving Paradox. Now, let me start by saying this. We are going to be talking about money. But when I say that, that you, I want to let you know, I don't count the money. All right? Nor do I know who gives what. All right? that's, that's not my concern. All right? I do know what comes in, total amount, and I do know what goes out. But I don't know what everyone gives personally. It's not my concern. That's between you and God. But I do want to make sure that we know what the Bible says concerning our finances. So with that, I want to read again our verses, all right? But I'm going to read from the New American Standard Bible. Listen to what it says. There is one who scatters and yet increases all the more. And there is one who withholds what is just to do and yet it results only in want. The generous man will be prosperous, and he, and he who waters will himself be watered. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. Yeah. Now I want us to understand what it means to give. I want us to understand what it means to be able to do what God says for us to do concerning our finances. Now understand, the word paradox means that you have two words or two different statements that seem like they contradict each other until you look a little further. Yeah. Kind of like our title this morning. The title number one of this message is, Giving Produces Increase. Yeah. A lot of people will say, how does that even make sense? <laughs> if I give, don't I have less? Right? Or, in order for me to increase, don't I have to receive something first? Well, both of those things are true. But so is the third one. That when you give, you increase. When you give, you receive a harvest. But it's going to take us to go into the Word to find out how that third one is true. And in order for us to do that, we got to look at the Scripture. To see what the Bible says. Now before some of y'all close y'all ears, <laughs> Pastor Steve finally got around to talking about money. I wonder if, I was wondering when it was going to come. Right? He ain't talked about money yet. But every preacher got to talk about money. Right? So before you close your ears, let me just tell you a little something first. First, the reason why we talk about money, because Jesus talked about money. Yes, there are 28 passages in the Gospels that talk about money, material possessions. Now understand now, 11 out of the 39 parables of Jesus is Jesus dealing with money or material resources. So that's like every fourth Sunday, Jesus get up and say, you know what, we're going to talk about money today. Every fourth Sunday, he's going to get up and say, kind of like a title, like, what's in your wallet type of deal, right? <laughs> what are you doing with what I gave you? And probably just for, you know, to make sure we get it, like every fifth Sunday, he'll come back up and say, you know what, let's talk about money again. All because.
dollars. He wants us to understand how God views money. Yeah. Now understand that. <laughs> the only thing that God, Jesus, God the Son, talked about more than money was the kingdom of God. Yeah. <laughs> now let's put that in perspective now. That means he talked about money more than he talked about love. Right. He talked about money more than he talked about sin. He talked about money more than he talked about grace, forgiveness, right? Sin, holiness. He talked about money. So he says, it's, it's the kingdom of God being your money. That was the order. So that's why we talk about finances. Basically, if God deems it that important to talk about, then we should deem it that important to talk about as well. That's why at least once a year we're going to have a series on finance. I'm not going to tell you what that is because the church will get locked, right? <laughs> I'm going to just bring it on. You know what I mean? Right? So I'm going to tell you when, but we're going to talk about it because it's important. Yeah. And secondly, the second reason is because God cares about how you use what you have. Yeah. He cares how you use your money. He cares how you use your possessions. Not because he wants your money. Not because Pastor Steve wants your money. But because God already owns your money. He owns your car. He owns your clothes. Right? That clothes and all that stuff you have in yours. It's his. He's lending it to you for you to use. He owns it already. He allows us to use it. King David says in Psalm 24 and 1, he says, the earth is the Lord's and all its kind and all it contains. The world in there are those who dwell within. God owns everything. Everything. He owns his chairs. He owns his coat. He owns the mites. Right? He owns everything. He owns the trees. Everything God owns. He owns the earth and everything in the earth. He owns. That house you live in, that apartment you live in, those buildings you go to for work, right? He owns that car you drive, the bus you ride. He owns those clothes, those toys, those bikes. He owns all of them. He lets us use it. And he even owns you. He, remember now, he owns the earth and everything in it. Right? So I mean, he owns humanity. He owns humanity for the very fact that he created humanity. The creator owns the creation. The manufacturer owns the product. We are his workmanship device. We are fashioned by his hands. We are made by him. And from the very fact that he created us means he owns us. And not only does he own us, he also purchased us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 20, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your body. Jesus paid for you with his blood, his death, and his resurrection. You don't own you. Especially if you are a Christian, you don't own you. God owns you. God owns us. So therefore, he says to glorify him with our bodies because you don't own your body. God does. And so not only does God own all of creation, he owns all of the world's currency. All the money belongs to God. I know you got a fat stack in your pocket ain't yours. It's God's. Look at your bank account. You see all them zeros? Don't get too proud of ain't yours. It's God. God proclaims in Haggai 2 and 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord. Everything belongs to God. The euro belongs to God. The yen belongs to God. The dollar belongs to God. And he is not so much concerned about the paper, but what we do with the paper. Amen. It's not about the money. Because God doesn't need silver. He doesn't need gold. It's asphalt in heaven, and, it's, and pearls are concrete in heaven. He doesn't need that stuff. Amen. But he wants to know what you are doing with this stuff. Amen. He cares. 
about what you do but what you have. Because what you do with it shows who you believe in. What you do with it shows who you're trusting in. It shows who your God is. That is why money matters. The way you use it matters because it, 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 it shows your heart. Yeah. And your heart shows who you worship. Yeah. So it's not so much God is concerned about the money. He cares less about the money. He cares where your heart lies. Yeah. He cares where your love lies. Yeah. He cares where your allegiance lies. So he looks at her money and he says, oh, he ain't serving me. Yeah. Right. Come on now. He don't love me. Or, or, or he's all about me because I can trace it when I look at his check register. I can trace it when I look at what he's doing with what I've given him. And you know, there's many believers, many Christians who come to church every Sunday. They won't miss a Sunday. Please don't miss a Sunday, right? They won't miss a Sunday. And they come in I mean, they worship the Lord. I mean, they giving it to me. They sing it. They dance it. They jump it. They love Jesus. Then when they walk out, they're like, yeah, I'm about to go and buy what I want. <laughs> so they worship him with their lips. They worship him with their presence. But with their wallets, they worship themselves. With their wallets, they worship their keys. With their wallets, they worship <coughs> Their lust, with their wallets, they worship their stomachs. They, with their wallets, they worship all kinds of stuff other than God. Jesus says in Matthew 6 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So wherever you place your treasure, your money, your resources, shows me your heart is. Amen. And for a lot of us, our heart is right there in that driveway. Yeah. Waxing. Yeah. Mm. Ain't she pretty? Mm. A lot of us. We pull it up to our house. Ooh, ain't that pretty? Yeah. Putting all your money in what will burn away. Yeah. Putting all your money in what will not last. Yeah. Right? You put all of that. You go into the mirror like, ooh, ain't he cute? Yeah. Got on nice shoes, woo! Right, got your hair done, D, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> worshiping you mm -hmm. instead of worshiping God. Yeah. So remember now, worship is not about where you are or, or, or your money. God is not concerned about the money itself, right? right. What you do with the money. Because what you do with the money determines what you are. Amen. What you do with the money determines who you worship. Yeah. Right. And so whatever God gives us, we're supposed to be good stewards over it. Amen. And a exactly. steward is nothing more than a manager. Yeah. Right? Like if you're a manager at your job, you don't own the job. Amen. Amen. You don't own the business. Right? You are a manager. You make sure things are working properly in the business. The same thing applies to your finances. You're a manager over it. You do not own it. Remember, I got you. Hey, God owns it. Yes, yes. He gives it to you. He gives it to me. And he wants us to be good stewards over it, good managers over yes. it. Yes. First Peter 14 reminds us, as each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Yes. God gives it. Be a good steward over it. Everyone is a steward. Every single person in here is a steward over God's resources. The question is not, am I a steward? Because you are. The question is, am I a good steward or a wicked steward? That's the question. The question is not, will I steward? The question will be, how will I steward? Will I steward it for God? Or will I steward it for me? Right. A wicked steward uh -huh. handles money opposite to what the Bible says. Yeah. Right. The Bible says to pay your bills, not go out and eat all the time. 
Bible says to save for your future, not to spend it on toys all the time. Amen. The Bible says to give, and you shall receive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A good steward follows what the Bible says right. and applies it to their habits, yeah. applies it to their life. Why? Because we want to glorify God yeah. with all we have. Yeah. And one thing a good steward does is they are generous. Amen. They are generous with what God has given them because they understand it's not theirs. Amen. See, when I come and take something from you and you think it's yours, you think I stole from you. Right. But if it's yours, I didn't steal from you. Right. It ain't yours. That's right. And because they are generous, God gives them more. Amen. If you are good over what you have, God will give you more to deal with. Amen. If you can't handle five dollars, <laughs> why would he give you five hundred dollars? You will blow it. And then get mad at him because you blow it. <laughs> or blew it. That wasn't correct English, because you got the point, right? Yeah. Right? You, you. If God gives you this a little bit, you gotta handle this a little bit first before he gives you more. Why give you a promotion if you can't handle the job you have? Right. Yeah. Verse 24, 25, our text. Mm -hmm. It speaks about being generous. Yeah. Listen to what it says. This is the King James Version, which I read. It says, there is a scattered and yet increasing. Mm -hmm. And there is that withhold of more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Yeah. The proverb is showing us the concept of farming of sowing and reaping. Yes. When you sow, you reap. Yes. When you scatter, yes. you be generous with your seed right. as a farmer. Yes. So you can't farm and only put out one seed. You ain't gonna get no harvest. Yes. But when you're generous with the seed you've been given, yes. the Bible tells us that an increase will come. Harvest will come. Why? Because you were generous yes, with your seed. Amen. The seed is your money. The seed is your resources. Like you got a car and you don't want to pick nobody up at church. Why? Because you think it's yours. You think it's yours. So you don't want to sit on your left in your car. Your plush cushion in your car. But when you understand it's your car. You pick anybody up. Because you're happy God giving you a ride. Right? He's letting you get to church. The same thing, the sowing and the reaping, is the same thing the Apostle Paul tells his church in Corinth. And he tells to us as well. Listen to what he says. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 10. It says, Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, as a necessity, somebody making you to give. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that always having all sufficiency in all things, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he that scattered abroad, he came to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest for your righteousness. Yes. You sow, you reap. Yes. But you sow the seed God gave you. You didn't even make the seed. Yes. God made the seed. Yes. God owns the seed. Yes. He tells you what to do with the seed. Yes. And when you do what he wants you to do with the seed, he multiplies the seed. Yeah. Yeah. He multiplies it so that you can invest more into your harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Giving produces increase. Yes, I know it sounds like a paradox, mm -hmm. but giving produces the harvest. Yeah. God gives you seed, you sow seed. Yeah. And then God multiplies your seed mm -hmm. so that you can have more seed. So that you can be able then to have a harvest. Yes. Amen. All right. So that you can take care of your responsibilities. Yes. 
All your money ain't supposed to be given in tithes and offerings. Right? And I know some preachers just cut me off. Right? <laughs> but all your money, do not go to tithes and offerings. Right. You got to pay your bills. Right. You got to save for retirement. Right. You got to take a vacation with your kids. They mad that you are yeah. ready. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got to eat. Yeah. So, so you don't take all your money and give in tithes and offering, but you do give tithes and offering. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 He gives seed for Word. a harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if, if you eat your seed, <laughs> if you eat your seed, some of y'all walking around just like this, eating honey, right? Yeah. Some of y'all see just take it, shaking your hand, eating. Right. If you eat your seed, you destroy your heart. Yeah. Because God is only going to operate in what he has already put in place. So if you eat your seed, you mess up your harvest. Yeah. God does not need the harvest. Yeah. He is fine where he's at. He got people and angels worshiping him all day long. Yeah. He don't need the harvest. Yeah. You need the harvest. Yeah. Your seed is your tithes and your offering. Amen. Amen. You eat your tithes, you mess up your heart. Amen. You eat your offering, you destroy your heart. Amen. Your seed needs to be planted as much as it can fertile ground. You see people get saved. Yeah. You see lives change. Yeah. You see people come to know Jesus. Families being restored. Then there's some, as verse 24 says, the last portion, when we withhold more than is meat. When we, when we withhold more than what is right, more than what is justly due to us, it tends or leads or moves toward poverty, towards wanting, towards lack, towards not having enough. You steal from God, you end up in lack. Right. 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 You take what ain't yours, you end up in poverty. Right. You end up personally lacking. Stingy people, oh. people who hoard what ain't theirs, oh. will end up in lack. Right. Will end up not receiving the blessing yeah. of God. Right. Right. You may say, well, you know what? I ain't gave all this long, and I ain't seen nothing happen. Right? <laughs> My number's still growing. <laughs> well, what you talking about, preacher? <laughs> well, you may not be lacking in money, but you are lacking in integrity. Yeah. You are lacking in character. Yeah. You are lacking in holiness. Right? You're lacking in obeying Jesus. Yeah. So you may be increasing, no. but yeah. your holiness is all out of way. Yeah. Following Jesus is all out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. And you know God is sovereign, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do whatever he wants with his stuff. Yeah. But he can't take it. Yeah. Blow yeah. your money. Yeah. 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 Your money now. If you want to get your money, you can feel it. Blow on it. Right. Or, or he'll let you put it into your holes that got pockets in that have, yeah. in your pockets that holes in. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Some of us can have can really have a lot of money, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And it makes sense. Right? So there's a lot of us we give and tithes and offering, right? I mean y'all fake women, but you still got holes in your pockets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're not responsible for the other 90%. Oh. Yeah. When you ain't responsible for the other 90%, it just dwindles away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You can have thousand dollars in the bank. And you're faithful with what God is giving you, and you give you seeds more, and you just take that 90% and you just going away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We should be operating yeah. the way God wants us. Yeah. Uh, this is what Ecclesiastes 5 and 10 says. It says, he who loves money will not be satisfied with money. Nor he who loves abundance with income. People who love money, they never have enough money. Right? People who love to see those, those checks fly in will never have enough checks. Yeah. Ecclesiastes <coughs> 5.13 says, 
Riches being hoarded by their owner is to his purse. Yes. So the more you hoard, yeah. the more you keep what's not yours. Amen. Come on. It does not hurt God. It hurts no. you. Yes, sir. Amen. Right? God's not hurt because you're, you're not giving in tithes and offering. Amen. You will be hurt. Yes. Because he won't bless you. Yes, sir. He won't bless you with what he has deemed for you. Not giving and tithes and offering right. will not hurt God. It may hurt his feelings. Yes, sir. Right. God has feelings. Yes. Yes. Right. The Bible says for us not to grieve the Holy Spirit, which means to make him sad. Yes. Which means that God has feelings. Yes. So when we don't do what we're supposed to do, God gets sad, but God ain't going to be hungry. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. God's going to make sure these lights are paid. Right. He's he going to make sure that the mortgage is paid. Yeah. He's going to make sure. Because he's going to bring people in who wants to give. Now, I, can't tell, I don't know who gives already. All right. All right. All right. But I do know God is faithful. Yeah. Yeah. I do know yeah. God takes care of his own. Yeah. I do know that God makes sure what he has given will be supplied. Yeah. 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 Verse 25 tells us, it says, the liberal soul, it's King James, the liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall be watered also himself. The New American Standard says, the generous man will prosper. Yes. The generous man yes, sir. prosper. They will be made satisfied. Mm -hmm. They won't have lack. They won't be wanting for anything. Thank you, God will prosper yes. there. Yes. Satisfied. Matter of fact, their cup will overflow. The blessing of God will make it come in and overflow. And the overflow means that you cannot contain the blessing of God. Yes, sir. You have to give it away. Yes. Because it's too much for you to handle yes. all by yourself. Yes. You'll be satisfied. Because you're generous. Yes. The whole saying goes, if you handle God's business, you handle your business. Yes. Right? Right? Not business, your business. Yes. You handle God's business. Yes. 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 God handle your business. Amen. Amen. When you and I are generous with God's money, with God's resources, with God's possession, Amen. and generous in the way that the Bible declares. Uh -huh. yeah. right? Not, not somebody making you feel guilty about giving. No. Yeah. Not somebody trying to manipulate you about giving. Uh -huh. But when you honor God in his word, sure. he will give you everything you need. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And that and more. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He'll give you seed. Yeah. He'll multiply your seed. All right. And he will bring a heart. Yeah. 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 The scripture says that he who waters will himself be watered. Uh -huh. If you give, you're going to receive Right. Right. You pour out water, God's going to walk you. Right. You bless, God's going to bless you. Right. 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 I, my job is never to manipulate people to give. Uh -huh. yeah. My job is never to guilt trip people to give. You will never hear Pastor Steve getting up here begging for money. Right. Right. I got too much pride for that. And pride right. for Steve. I got too much of it. <laughs> too much. To get up and beg for some money. Oh, yes, sir. But I will teach. Yes. I will yes. teach what the Bible yes. says about money. There is nothing in Scripture that would anybody say, I gotta get my life together with my money. Yes. So it's my job to teach you. Uh -huh. It's your job to obey. Yes. I can't let you obey. But I can teach you this word. Yes. I can show you what God says. In his word and the Holy Spirit can illuminate the word to you to where you will be convicted about how you handle God's stuff. I don't have to beg you. I don't have to manipulate you. I love you too much to manipulate you. But I also love you too much to not tell you the truth. Say Corinthians 9 6 says, So sparingly, yes, three sparingly. Yeah. So bountifully, uh -huh. you reap bountifully. Yeah. Amen. You give a little, God bless you a little. That's yeah. what it means. Right? You give a little, God's going to give you.
you a lot. Amen. You give a lot, God gives you a lot. Amen. That's how it works. That's how his economy works. Thank you, Jesus. This also includes not just tithes and offerings, uh -huh. but it's giving to the poor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right. So it's giving to those in need. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the Operation Christmas Child. I done messed up the name on it. It's married the first thing we do with the boxes. Yes, right? Sir. Yes. The same thing. Because we're giving to the poor. Yeah. 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 Those babies are poor. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Love God. Amen. God gave you the paper. Yes, 
Yes, he did. God gave you the currency. Yeah. Love God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We don't need to trust in anything that will, that will not last forever. Yes. 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 Proverbs 27 4 says that riches, they will not last. Yes, sir. They can go away in months. Mm -hmm. On top of the world today. Yeah, yeah. Music and flat bread. <laughs> but if you got y'all, you can start over. Amen. 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 If that God is your money, Amen. you go jump off the cliff. Yeah. If you got God, you can get up and say, let's start this thing again. Yeah. We can rebuild. Yeah. We can make it better. Yeah. We can make it stronger. Yeah. Yes, right? Yeah. That's fine, man. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Right? <laughs> Trust in that which is eternal. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. First Timothy 6, 17 says, Charge them that are rich in this world, mm -hmm. that they be not high-minded, Hallelujah. No trust in uncertain riches. Amen. But in the living God, which giveth us richly all things to be yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all just blocked out. Fast things. Yes, Thank God you ain't talking about me. Oh, right? Because yeah. I ain't rich. Yeah. Right? That's Jay Z. He rich. Uh -huh. Right? LeBron James. He rich. Right? But me, I ain't rich. So that scripture don't apply to me. <laughs> if you live in America, you're yes. rich. As a matter of fact, if you make over $30,000 a year, you are in the 10% highest bracket of wealth in America, in the world, right? In the world, you make over $30,000. Yes, sir. You are the highest wage owners in the world because you live in America. People are asked to make it 50 a day. You can play. Because you don't have enough to go to the game. But you have enough to eat. You can get water. You can take your kids to the park. You can do all kinds of stuff. But you can play. Yes, sir. There's people who can barely eat rice. Because rice, well, instead of being a dollar fifty, it's ten dollars a box. Over in another country. Trust the money. That's right. That's right. Trust God. Amen. Don't trust the currency. Trust God. Amen. You don't give, you hoard, you trust money. That's that simple. Amen. You don't give, you don't obey God, you trust the money. Amen. You obey God, you give, you're generous, you obey God as His word declares, you trust God. That's that simple. Amen. Trust is shown by what you do, not what you say. That's right. That's right. A lot of us, we say we trust God. Uh -huh. To the bill man called. We don't trust God. Uh -huh. A lot of us trust God. Uh -huh. To things go wrong. Uh -huh. And it shows we don't trust God. Uh -huh. Trust is shown by what you do, not what you uh -huh. say. Right, right. Yeah. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, God says over in Proverbs 11, oh, it says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivers from death. Yeah. No matter how much money you have, come on. It ain't gonna keep you away from God. Amen. Right. 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 No matter how much you you, you, you put a, a a a shield around you because of all your money. Mm -hmm. Anything happens, you got more than enough money to take care of. Yeah. Right. You can do all that until the time of judgment. Yeah. Right. And that money will count for nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it can't keep you. From God's judgment. Yeah. And the only thing that's going to keep you from God's judgment is the righteousness. Yeah. You being right with God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Zephaniah 1.18 says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. So when it comes down to it, no matter how much money you hold, mm -hmm. how much money you hold, how much money that you keep that's not yours, yeah. You can't hide from God. Right. Mm -hmm. God's judgment will come after you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And no matter how much money you have already given, right? Because a lot of us, we pride ourselves on how much we give, not how less we give, how much we give. Right. Yeah. Last time I looked at the offering, I gave the biggest check. Last time I looked at the tithes and offering, I gave the biggest amount. Come on, now. That ain't going to work either. Yes, sir. Right. 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 
Because that right there is you saying that you're going to buy your way into heaven. And God don't care about your money. You do not buy your way into heaven. Yes, sir. You think, because you wrote the biggest check last month, that uh -huh. you're supposed to get special treatment from God. Uh -huh. You won't be here when Peter told them people in the past, yes. let money perish with you. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Yeah. You don't have enough money to pay for salvation. Right. You don't have enough money to get to those pearly gates. Amen. Matter of fact, it's already been paid for anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus paid for it. He paid for your salvation. Yeah. He paid for your life. Yes, sir. Remember, you're bought with a price. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. You don't need to buy it. Mm -hmm. You just need to receive it. Amen. <laughs> you just need to receive what he's already done. Amen. By repenting, believing in his gospel, mm -hmm. and confessing him as your Lord. Yes. yes. Receive his mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It's not about money. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's about your worship. Thank you, Jesus. It's about your life. Thank you, Lord. you help us understand that everything we have is yours. You have given us the privilege to use it. You've given us the privilege to be able to manage it and to steward it for your glory. Help us to walk according to your word. To handle it according to your word. Yes. Help us to live according to Jesus. We thank you right now. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.